As a mayoral candidate back in 2013, Marty Walsh promised to be a champion of the arts. Now he's following through on that promise. On Friday, he announced Boston Creates, a 10-year community-wide plan to strengthen arts in the city, and it has money behind it. The plan took more than a year to come up with after collecting feedback from 5,000-plus people, and it consists of five main goals. Create a fertile ground for the arts, keep artists in the city and draw more to it, respect and promote all cultural expressions and make the arts accessible to all, integrate art into all aspects of city life, and collaborate with new institutions and sectors. To help finance all this, Walsh is signing an executive order this summer, which will take about $1.4 million of the city's five-year capital plan funds and put them towards arts investments. The Boston Redevelopment Authority is also reserving low-income housing for artists, and nonprofits are already signing on to back artistic projects over the next several years. We had this incredibly participatory process and came up with the vision for the arts, the vision for the arts to be inclusive and to keep artists in Boston and to really have Boston be as well known for the arts as it is for sports and history. And the plan is really well informed by the, the needs of the sector. And now we pivot to implementation and we work towards achieving those goals. Joining me now are Summer L. Williams, co-founder and director of public relations at Company One Theater. She also teaches drama and directing at Brookline High School and WGBH arts editor Jared Bowen. Summer and Jared, thanks for coming in. Adam. Easy for you, right? <laughs> uh, so one aspect of this announcement that kind of surprised me uh, is that the mayor's press release talks about how if everything goes according to plan, the uh, Boston Creates is going to help make Boston a municipal arts leader. Mm -hmm. And I think as a transplanted Bostonian, I have this notion that we're already doing everything really well. Mm -hmm. Why isn't Boston a municipal arts leader yet? Well, uh, the issue is that we're a thriving art scene. I mean, uh, there have been studies in, over the last couple of years which have shown that the, the Boston, in terms of arts organizations and attendance, leads the nation, especially in Per, when you look at it per capita, we have more arts groups than anywhere else. We have more people going to the arts than anywhere else. But this has all, frankly, been kind of in spite of the city. The city has never put itself in a position where it can support the arts with a dedicated revenue stream, artist housing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, Mayor Walsh, as he campaigned on a couple of years ago, has pledged to support the arts in this city and has made steps toward putting money behind his promises. Summer, how could this Boston Creates plan, and I know it's just rolling out now, mm. but how could it end up changing the work that you do and making it easier for you to create the sort of stuff you want to create? Wow. Um, so I think it's a, a twofold thing. I think it's a great, great start. Um, and I think it has to work in conjunction with the Boston 2030 plan, right? Because a part of what the plan is hoping to do is to create um, an artist community that is thriving and vibrant. And hopefully that community will then further enrich other communities and we can break down some of the, the walls, the things that kind of separate Boston because overall the city is pretty siloed. And this gives us an opportunity to figure out how to take a community, really develop it, really make it resource rich, uh, and then it, um, use that as a model for some of the other areas of Boston that need this sort of support. So it's talking, among other things, the plan uh, is, is talking about going into certain areas and making them sort of uh, incubators, right, mm -hmm. for artistic activity. What are some of the areas that uh, they've highlighted? Well, one of the main issues, and, and one of the things that really struck me is, uh, th that was Julie Burroughs, who we just saw yeah. talking about the arts. She's, of course, the, the first chief of arts and culture in the city in years. That, that's also a, a, a pledge by the mayor to have an arts chief in the city. But I was at a session with her where she was talking to a group of Berkeley University students, or Berkeley College students, I should say. And there, I think there were about 12 or 13 there really, really bright kids, innovative, can't wait to get out and graduate and get into the work field. She asked how many are st staying in Boston when they graduate. Only one raised their oh. hand. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the first issues that they have to to, to, to deal with is to make this a climate where it's conducive for artists to stay because this is a very expensive city and they want to be able to work here without finding these really encumbersome pro uh, processes. Summer, when you work with people who decamp for other places, do they do it because Boston's too expensive or do they do it because there are more exciting opportunities in New York or LA or somewhere else? I think there are perceived more opportunities in New York and in LA, but that's not necessarily true. In fact, people are working and people are working often here. They're just not working in such a way that the, the uh, what they're earning is going to be able to sustain them. And so they're working two or three other jobs just to afford rent um, and to be able to have housing opportunities, to be able 
able to work and live as an artist in the city is a really tough thing to do. Well, they'll need to do that on a pretty broad scale, right? I mean, because I think the plan talks about 10 units being set aside for artists in a housing development in Bunker Hill that's becoming mixed income. How many spaces will need to be set aside for artists so that people can work without, uh, you know, not sleeping at all and, and trying to make art at, at the same time that they're working as a barista or, or an admin assistant or whatever? Sure, sure. Um, it, that's a tough Thousands question. I, I, it, it feels like that number is huge because it's not just the artist community that's having issues with housing, right? Affordable housing is an issue in Boston across the city. So a part of kind of this step shouldn't just be for artists, but should be everyone. And I think a part of kind of tapping into that everyone resource, is this is the first step. Yeah, I think, I think that's one of the major issues here is to make the arts landscape a whole. As Summer just mentioned, this is a very siloed community. You don't see a lot of organizations necessarily working with each other. You don't see the city working with the organizations as much as they could be until now. And I think that's what part, part of Boston Creates is, is, is breaking down these barriers so everybody can work together and figure out how they can come together to you know, sort of compete in a very good-natured way, but also to build each other up. And, and having 10 units, 10 residential units in, in Boston municipal projects going forward is just a start. Hopefully it's going to be much more expansive later on. I gotta ask you both, uh, what was the one part of the plan that most excited you when it was unveiled? And feel free, if you want to stick Jared with the opening <laughs> answer as you ponder. Uh, was there one thing Well, that I really can tell you that you? there was a lot of criticism about this plan, even right. before it was announced, because a lot of people wondered, well, this is great. You have all these great ideas about how to build the arts. This is sort of a kumbaya moment, but where's mm. the money? Because it, a lot of it comes down to money. And there and is money. People they were, said they were identifying all these ways they weren't going to be able to fund it, right, in an early draft. Right, Absolutely. and I think, and it surprised many, it surprised me that the city did come up with some funding mechanisms. There's not a sustainable revenue stream yet. That is the big one. So we have... The, we have in this plan indications of how money will come going, for, you know, at least for the first couple of years, but it's a start. I think it's happening, right? That's where the excitement is, that, there, that there's something concrete, there's a plan that's being worked toward, there, uh, there's policy and energy happening behind it, so something is in the right direction. All right, last question. As a totally non-artistic person, I think of art, whatever the, the medium, as something that just sort of happens organically due to creative inspiration and genius. Is there any danger of the city becoming so engaged in an effort to make the art scene flourish here that they end up micromanaging in a way that's counterproductive at least sometimes? I don't see that at all. I don't see that. I was just no. joking about yeah. that. <laughs> I don't think right, so. Well, good. I don't it's, think so. The great thing about the arts in this community, there's such a backbone, including with Summer and her, and her company, uh, that that's not going to happen. All right. Summer Williams, Jerry Bowen, thank you both. Thank you.